Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got done talking about the U.S. Swimming and Olympic Trials, day three and day four, and now we're going to talk about softball. So we're going to talk about the how softball is making their Olympic return and then some AUX series highlight. So softball will be back in the Olympics with Los Angeles in 2028. The sport joined baseball across squash, cricket, and flag football as additions for the LA Games in a vote conducted by the IOC back in October. Softball's original tenure in the Olympics from 1996 to 2008 helped boost the popularity of the sport and open the doors to stardom for players like Jenny Fitch and Kat Osterman and helped establish an electric rivalry between the U.S. and Japan. The guarantee of Olympic attention tension can be big for any sport even if the games are in question are still half a decade away but it feels especially crucial at this moment for softball wait half a decade wait no almost half a decade technically yeah I'm like trying to do math in my head I'm like wait that actually isn't right almost half a decade because half a decade is six years and it's in yeah, almost half a decade. This is four years, okay? That's almost half a decade. Okay, anyway. There's been dramatic growth in recent years in the college game. The last few women's college world series have set viewership records and outdrawn the men and the world college world series. But the landscape can still feel precarious for players who stick with the sport after college. National pro fast pitch shuttered during the pandemic. There are now two leagues in this place, Athletes Unlimited and Women's Professional Fast Pitch. Yet, pro softball is still a part-time supplementary gig for most players rather than a full-time focus, and there's little available in the way of long-term commitment. It can be difficult to navigate even for star players and forget about having freedom or flexibility to plan ahead. For softball to be in the Olympics then is more than just a chance for the sport to occupy a grand stage, it's a way for the game to anchor itself in the future. Bringing softball back to the Olympics in 2028 is a huge win for women in sports, and honestly, it's about time i have been waiting for this moment for so long when the international olympic committee decided to include softball in the los angeles games alongside other sports like baseball and lacrosse they didn't just add a sport they reunited a passion and a spotlight that had dimmed too soon and lacrosse hasn't did deserve to get a lot of attention as well i feel like baseball does pretty good in the sense but i would say that softball and lacrosse are in more need than baseball would be in attention so, like, remember the days of Jenny Finch and Kat Osman? Those were the times when softball in the Olympics really shone, turning players into stars and sparking an intense rivalry between the U.S. and Japan. This wasn't just good for the sport, it was great for the fans and the athletes who got to see their heroes on the world's biggest sports stage. But then softball did get cut after the 2008 games, which was a real setback. It lost its global platform and all the perks that come with being an Olympic sport, like better funding and broader exposure. Yet despite this, softball at the college level has been killing it, setting viewership records and even outdrawing the men's games, like I've said. It shows there's a match of appetite for women's softball, and this is a really good thing that is coming to the Olympic Games because I do think it will be watched heavily. The pro scene, though, is a different story. I've talked about this multiple times. It does disappoint me. It's a bit rocky. The pandemic saw the end of the national pro fast pitch, and what we got in this place, athletes unlimited and women's professional flashbacks is cool but still a bit shaky it hasn't been doing great in viewership for a lot of the players playing pro softball isn't a full-time gig but more of a side hustle which is okay but it isn't ideal if we want the sport to grow so that's why getting softball back in the olympics for 2028 is such a big deal it's not just about having another event to watch it's about giving softball a stable home where it can thrive olympic exposure means the world is watching which can lead to more sponsorships better training opportunities and overall more support for the women who dedicate their lives to the game this move is super important for younger generations too it gives little girls heroes to look up to and shows them that softball can be a serious career path the stories of olympic athletes aren't just exciting sports drama they're powerful tales of determination and success that can inspire everyone so looking ahead to the la 2028 games the inclusion of softball is a big step forward and the push for gender equality in sports it's a reminder of how far we've come and how much work there is still to do it's about making sure female athletes get the recognition they deserve and helping the sport they love get the spotlight it needs to grow 
The next thing I want to talk about with Sobble is the AUX Series 1 of the season. The second series started on June 16th, and we talked about the rosters for the three teams in yesterday's show. So before we talk about the second series game, I wanted to recap the first series and go ahead and check out my video from yesterday about the team rosters if you're interested in hearing about that. Okay, so we have some pictures over here. Oh, sorry. It was like not working. Oh, there we go. Okay, so... Um, the inaugural season of the 2024 AUX season was a showcase of softball brilliance with the three competing teams delivering walk-off homers, extra inning thrillers, and plays worthy of making it onto SportsCenter's top 10 list. Each team ended the series with a balanced record of 2-2. The gold and orange teams were neck and neck, each tallying 271 points, while the blue team trailed with 180 points due to fewer inning wins. Joshua and Alone, obviously, not surprisingly, shown brightly, emerging as the top mover of Series 1, seizing the number one spot on the leaderboard in her AU Pro Softball debut. Going 5 for 11 at the plate, she not only showcased her power with two home runs and a double, but also walked her way to an impressive slugging percentage of 1.091. Taylor Edwards matched ILO and MVP points with both athletes receiving accolades for MVP 1 and MVP 2, accumulating 100 points in this category from the series. A seasoned player since the league's inception, Edwards now steps up as a captain for the first time, bringing her experience and timely hitting to the forefront. Rookie Mackenzie Clark made an immediate impact, quickly climbing to the fourth spot on the leaderboard with a battling line of four for nine, including a rare triple and a grand slam. Clark made a definitive statement about a prowess and potential. She runs with the new captain trio as she makes the as she takes the helm of the blue team. Bubba Nichols, though unable to serve as captain due to her academic commitments at UCLA, where she graduated with a master's degree, remains a formidable presence. She leads the league in home runs and stat points, her performance highlighted by three homers, showing she's on track to challenge Maya Davidson's 2023 AUX home run record. Sydney McKinney is setting the standard for batting excellence this season with an incredible .8 batting average and an on-base percentage of .769. Her performance at the play has been flawless with no strikeouts to date, which is so insane. On the mound, keep an eye on Taylor McKillen with a 1.75 ERA and a league-leading 12 strikeouts over 12 innings. Her left-handed pitchers add a strategic edge given the rarity of left-handed pitchers this season. The level of competition in Series 1 has set a high bar for the rest of the AUX season, promising more exciting softball action ahead. Before we move on to the next segment, we are going to talk about the first game of the second series, which was on Sunday, like I said earlier. Okay, so... Team Clark mounted a dramatic 7th inning comeback to clinch a 10-4 victory over Team Edwards. This exhilarating win set Team Clark on a positive trajectory with a 1-0 record for the season's second series, while Team Edwards faced an early setback. The game took a decisive turn in the 7th inning thanks to critical home runs from Billy Andrews and Sarah Willis. Andrews playing as a middle infielder delivered a game tying to run homer, her second this season, earning her MVP 1 honors and adding 180 points to her leaderboard tally. Meanwhile, outfielder Sarah Willis blasted a three run homer in the final frame, securing MVP 3 honors and contributing significantly to the team's late game surge with 140 leaderboard points. Despite their loss, Team Edwards saw commendable performances from pitcher Mariah Menzon, who started the game strongly, limiting Team Clark to just two runs over six innings and ended the game with MVP two honors. However, relief pitcher Alex DeRocco struggled on the final inning, allowing eight runs, which took the game in Team Clark's favor. Team Edwards also showcased power of the play with Delaney Wiss and catcher Haley Lee, each hitting home runs. Outfield and Morgan circle went two for three scoring a run and contributing to the team's early lead alicia Cassio, pitching in relief for team clark earned the win allowing two runs over these three innings rookie payton godshell made a notable appearance retiring team edwards in order in the final inning to seal the victory the pivotal moment came as team clark trailed four to two entering the seventh inning an explosive defensive outburst ensued with the team sending 11 batters to the plate racking up eight runs on five hits including the crucial homers from andrews and willis this momentum and they not only turned the tide of the game, but also made a significant impact on the leaderboard standings. Mackenzie Clark, now leading the leaderboard with 570 points, demonstrated her leadership in her debut as captain. Mariah Manzana and Billy Andrews also saw significant jumps in the rankings, with Andrews making the most considerable leap, climbing 21 with spots to 13th place. 
The game was not without its strategic maneuvers, with both teams initiating an successful captain's challenges in the fourth inning. The season's tally for captain's challenges now stands at three successful out of seven attempts. This game also tied the record for most, most runs in a single inning in Athletes Unlimited Pro Softball AUX history, matching Team Garcia's eight-run inning from the la- a game last season. Furthermore, pitcher Mariah Manzan's effort of throwing a career-high 111 pitches and Alicia Casio's 16th career win, tying for the most in AU history, were notable milestones. There were three MVPs and one defensive MVP. The first MVP is Billy Andrews from Team Clark. Second MVP was Mariah Manzan from Team Edwards. The third MVP was Sarah Willis from Team Clark. And the defensive MVP was Jesse Warren from Team Clark. The thrilling game was not only showcased in showcasing <laughs> individual brilliance, but also the stage for what promises to be an intensely competitive AUX season. So now we're going to move on to our next segment where we talk about um, – Volley, women's volleyball national teams that qualify for the Paris Olympics. Before we get started, we are going to be taking a very short break, so I will see you guys very soon. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC. To access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news, subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. 